Okay, so in this video, uh, we're going to try to derive values for sine and cosine um, for these special first quadrant angles, right? Now, there, there's, there's a couple that we can get right away, because we know that, we know that for, for any point, right, for any point on the circle with coordinates, you know, if this point has coordinates x and y, we know that x is cosine of my angle. We know that y is sine of the angle. That's how sine and cosine are defined, right? As the coordinates, um, where theta is this angle measured from the positive x-axis. All right, um, so when theta is equal to zero, we can see that we're at the point one, zero. So that means that cosine of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 0. When theta is equal to pi over 2, well, then you're at the point 0, 1, right? And so that means that cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and sine of pi over 2 is 1. And similarly, the other four intercepts, you can, you can read off the answer, right? Cosine of pi is minus 1. Sine of pi is 0. Um, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Um, and, and by the way, for these, the ones below the x-axis, a lot of people will tend to measure those going clockwise. So rather than 3 pi over 2, right, it is minus pi over 2. You can do it that way as well. All right. Um, now, what about when theta is equal to pi over 4? Okay. Well, pi over 4 is right in the middle, right? It's this one that splits it in two. Um, and so there's some symmetry there. You have the same amount on this side as you do on that side to say that in this case, x is equal to y. So we have a right-angled triangle, which is in fact an isosceles right-angled triangle, right? Um, and, and we can work it out. I mean, the other way you know it's isosceles is that those two angles have to be the same, right? And and we know that for triangles, the, the angles also influence the, the ratios of the sides. So if those two angles are the same, the side lengths have to be the same. We know that the hypotenuse has length 1. And we know from Pythagoras that x squared plus x squared, well, that has to give me 1. So that means that 2x squared has to give me 1, right? That means that x squared. is one half. Uh, I'm in the first quadrant. So in the first quadrant, x and y are both positive. So I can take the positive square root. And that puts me at the point 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. Um, if you feel compelled to rationalize the denominator here, go right ahead. Uh, you could also write this as root 2 over 2. It really doesn't matter. Nobody in university is going to care if you rationalize your denominators. Um, so I wouldn't worry that much about it. Cos pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. Sine of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. Um, in fact, one of the reasons that you have to rationalize your denominator um, Historically, this was necessary because it used to be that you know you would calculate these values on you know as like a slide rule pre-calculator days, and and so you could work out what root two was on your slide rule and then you could divide by two, uh, and that that you could do, but you couldn't actually do one over root two. That was not an operation that you could do. So everyone had to learn to rationalize their denominators. Now we have calculators. It's not really necessary anymore. Okay. So you can leave it like that. Um, now pi over six. So there's a, there's a trick with pi over 6, which is you take, you take your, your triangle here, 
and you double it. So you, you put the mirror image down below. And one of the things you can work out is if this, is, if this angle is pi over 6, that's a pi over 2, right? It's a right angle. You can work out that the remaining one has to be pi over 3, right? If, if you want to, switch to degrees for a second, right? We know that the interior angles for a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. Um, if we have 90 and 30, the leftover one has to be 60 degrees, right? So if we reflect that across, symmetry says that this is also a 60 degree angle. And if you look at the big triangle, well, two 30 degree angles add up to a 60 degree angle. Um, so this is an equilateral triangle, right? If all three angles are the same, all three sides are the same. And we know that this side has length one, length one. So that side has length one. And that means that, again, because of symmetry, those two sides have length one half because you take a side of length one and you're splitting it in two, okay? So now I know that, uh, I know that my y coordinate here is one half. And I know that x squared plus y squared has to equal one. So x squared, so squaring a half gives me a quarter equals one. So x squared, if I subtract a quarter from both sides, x squared is, is three quarters. So to take the square root, you take the square root top and bottom. Pi over six is at coordinates x is root three over two, y is one half, okay? So that means that cos of pi over six is root three over two, sine of pi over six is one half. Okay, very good. All right, so that's not so bad. Uh, the only one that's left over is, is pi over three, but you can, you can kind of use some symmetry here that if you, you can exchange roles, right? Um, or you can go back to your right triangle trig, right? For, for this angle, uh, opposite and adjacent kind of switch roles, right? So sine and cosine switch roles. Um, and so you can work out that um, f the, the last angle to deal with in the, in the first quadrant, pi over three, well that's when x is one half and y is equal to root three over two. And so that means that cos pi over three is a half sine of pi over three is root three over two. Very good. Okay. So so those are the those are the basic sort of first quadrant values that you want to know when you're doing trig working with the unit circle. Um, pretty much everything else you're going to have to either rely on either trig identities or use your calculator to get values for other angles. Um, these are the only ones that are kind of easy to work out. Everything else takes a little bit more effort. Uh, now, the reason that I didn't bother with anything else here is that, like I said, um, all the other angles, they're related to the ones in the first quadrant through some sort of reflection. So if I go to something like 5 pi over 6, right, well, that is directly across from pi over 6, right? Uh, y coordinates are the same. X coordinate is opposite. So if I know that this is at root 3 over 2 and 1 half, I immediately know that this is at minus root 3 over 2 and 1 half, right? And so if I'm doing cosine of 5 pi over 6, I know it's minus root 3 over 2. If I'm doing sine of 5 pi over 6, I know it's 1 half, right? I'm just reflecting across, so I change the sine of the x coordinate. Um, same thing if I'm down at, say, 7 pi over 4, right? Um, x is still positive, so cosine of 7 pi over 4 is going to be 1 over root 2. Sine of 7 pi over 4 is going to be minus 1 over root 2, right? Uh, once you've got the first quadrant, you know everything else, you just have to pay attention to signs for the quadrant you're in. Remember that cos is always the x-coordinate, sine is always the y-coordinate, and you'll be okay.